does a young kid get from Bronx youth to renowned astrophysicist? For Neil deGrasse Tyson, this path was paved by an insatiable curiosity that began with a spark. Since age nine, the universe chose me in a first visit to the local planetarium, the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. Ever since then, had you asked me what I want to be when I grow up, that annoying question that adults always ask, I would have said, an astrophysicist. So began a lifelong desire to learn, resulting in Neil being an authority on subjects from astrophysics to engineering, political science to fine wine. This commitment to constant learning is something he has in common with all the great thinkers and visionaries, and enables us to ask the questions that push the frontier of human knowledge. I think often about the questions we do not yet know to ask because discoveries yet to come, but when they arrive, will put us in a new vista, a new place to stand, enabling us to see questions undreamt of and unimagined before we got there. Our greatest achievements as a species come from asking these types of questions and the curious spirit that drives it. Curiosity isn't a learned trait, it's a mindset that begins the moment we're cognizant, and it's why kids want to know more about everything. I don't think kids need any inspiration at all to have wonder about the natural world around them or to, to discover. That's all they do. If you let them, all right, if you let them run loose in your yard, that's the end of your yard, but they would have been <laughs> totally e exploratory under the rock, the bark of the tree, the leaves, in your home, they'll break stuff, but these are experiments. When we're young, the world is new and exciting, and we're naturally curious. And if this is encouraged by good teachers and mentors, our brains start to decode the world around us. Whether or not you ever again use the math that you learned in school, the act of having learned the math established a wiring in your brain that didn't exist before. And it's the wiring in your brain that makes you the problem solver. Expanding that logical, critical thinking part of the brain sets off chain reactions of questions that we may ponder for the rest of our lives. And if this isn't nurtured and protected, we start taking things at face value, simply what it is and not why it is. At some point, all that's beaten out of us. In school, we only think of knowledge. Let me pour this, let me unzip your head and pour knowledge in. Mm -hmm. and then give it back to me on a test, and then you've done well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's the analysis? Where is the interpretation? The method Where is yeah. that interaction right. with that knowledge? That is the expression of curiosity. The expression itself can be the hardest part. Sometimes we're discouraged and even criticized for asking questions, so we turn to the familiar, the acceptable. But this isn't how breakthroughs happen. When you actively keep that curious spirit alive, your brain is wired to be active and observant instead of passive and complacent. You're constantly opening new doors to opportunities and new ways of thinking, exposing yourself to the exciting, the fresh, the mind-blowing. We have such a limited range of cosmic life experience. The temperature range in which we experience and live, the range of density, the range of, uh, just think about how restrict, restricted our lives are compared to what is possible to experience in the universe. Expanding our cosmic life experience, as Neil calls it, is a humbling exercise. By constantly seeking out new information objectively and logically, we quickly realize that the more we know, the more we don't know, and consequently, the more we want to know. In Ian Leslie's book, Curious, he identifies several strategies for keeping that exploratory spirit alive. Ask why. For such a simple question, it can lead to profound answers, and yet it's often one of the hardest to ask. Maybe we don't want to look dumb or we think we know the answer already, but a well-timed why can be the difference between frustration and understanding. Read. We live in an age of unprecedented access to information. We can order textbooks to our doorstep and fill our Kindles with classic literature, not to mention the advancements and knowledge of our entire species accessed from a screen in our pockets. Our personal development of knowledge, then, is only limited by our interest and our focus. Learn different ways. The best way for new knowledge to stick is to tackle it from a few different angles, mixing lab and lecture, concrete and abstract, big picture and little details. 
One of the hardest lessons to learn is that it's almost impossible to get something on the first try, and more often it takes several passes just to get the basics. Embrace the boring. Sometimes when we start a new subject, they don't grab us right away. But the more you learn about it, the more it interests you. The details give a new perspective and you begin to see connective tissue to other subjects. Before deciding if we should continue down a path or not, we have to give enough time to understand the possibilities. Keep an open mind. Nothing is more detrimental to intellectual growth than becoming stuck in a particular mindset. If we don't challenge our own views by at least considering the alternatives, it's very easy to become stuck in that stagnating mentality. Curiosity is looking out at the universe in wonder. It's asking the big questions and the small questions. It's understanding the familiar and then pushing out into the frontier.